Hey guys, and how's it going? We're continuing on on the 1965 uh, Ford Econoline pickup truck that I grabbed from our property oh, about five weeks ago or so now. And in the past, the last video we just got done doing the exhaust manifold it was rotted out, busted, cracked, swollen, died of old age. Got that all set up. Uh, since then, I've done some work I didn't film, but I'll just get you caught up right now. First is I re-loosened the collar. Uh, we're kind of questioning whether there's a seal between the manifold and the pipe. I've kind of looked it up and it appears both ways, kind of weird. Anyhow, uh, loosened it up, wheeled it around. There is a shoulder down about four inches that clamps onto it that supports the pipe. Reset it, tightened it, nothing leaks at all. For now, I'm gonna leave it alone if I have a problem with it in the future. I am going to uh, get a donut of sorts to go in there. The one that we had was metal from the original one. Anyway, so that's where that is. All that seems to be fine. I took and put some antifreeze in it. The antifreeze, probably about half a gallon maybe, third of a gallon, topped it off, fired it up, warmed it up. It started leaking out of the top of the tank. And there's a spot inside of the radiator. Both leaking and uh, I'll get that to that in a minute. So that's done. I took it off the lift and putted it around. It has no brakes in first and reverse. And because it would only go in first and reverse, <laughs> I sprayed a bunch of lube in the shift points because the shifter wouldn't move up and down. That's what the problem was. Took care of that. Uh, the shifter now shifts into all gears. I have not had it back on the ground but it does now shift into all gears, at least up on the lift. And then I made a shopping list, took all the wheels off, wanted to see what we needed, dropped the gas tank to see if it was savable, and again, did a bunch of shopping. Fast forward, all the brakes are done. Everything is, I just replaced everything. I didn't bother saving anything. All new wheel cylinders, brake lines, brake hoses. Our emergency brake cables were working. I left them alone, but again, all that stuff has just been replaced. I have a new master cylinder. It is not in it yet. The, the issue with this is a single circuit master cylinder. What that means is uh, modern cars have a front and a rear, actually even more than that, but essentially you have a front and a rear circuit. So if a master cylinder or you, you break a hydraulic line, you push the pedal down, you still have one of the two circuits. Either it'll be the front two wheels or the back two wheels. Back when this was made they had what was called a single circuit so if anywhere if you have a failure anywhere you lose all the brakes other than the emergency brake parking brake however you want to call it so <laughs> with that i want to make sure that everything is good so i just replaced everything and the mass cylinder had to wait on for a little bit that just came in did some shopping and we have a new gas tank that needs to be modified because the one that goes in it is like 450 bucks not including any hardware or sending unit that was 139 it's a mustang tank and it came with a new sending unit all the hoses the coupler that kind of stuff rear tires hit or will hit if you go over a bump so i i thought i had some spring over shocks they are too short so i ordered some vw beetle rear uh, coilovers We'll see how they do. We may have to modify them a little bit because they don't list anything for this truck. The master. See with the master. And I'll show you that in a minute. I'll, I'll put you in a stand. New wheel bearings, new wheel seals. Uh, all the brake drums have been cut. And a new radiator because the original radiator is... Radiator, radiator. The original one is not available. And to get this one fixed at a uh, shop is about 250 bucks. So far, $108, a three row, three row, three row aluminum radiator is uh, gonna be its replacement. It's supposed to fit. The problem is in the picture, that bottom outlet is over there. And the, the drain pet is on the other side. Called them up, said that you do not match the picture. And uh, they finally acknowledged it after this went back and forth about 10 days. And they said, send it back. There is no other one 
available. We don't have that other one. So we're gonna keep, for 180 bucks, we're gonna keep this. We're gonna see if we can kind of convolute a hose going over to the other side. And I also figure in the future, if we do an engine upgrade, this will be able to handle a V8 or a bigger engine. And who knows where that hose setup is gonna be. So we're gonna wing it with that. In that master. A very weird design. Didn't expect to see that, did you? <laughs> it's like some kind of a gun for. <laughs> Stand back. <laughs> That's pretty impressive. You will do that with the old one. Anyway, single outlet. That's all it has. And uh, again, if it fails, it's done with. Uh, we still have to go put that in. So I'm not sure what we're going to go tackle first, but we're going to go tackle something in about five seconds. I lied. I forgot to show the gas tank. Anyway, so I dropped the tank down. And our friends were living on top of that. It was pretty much empty of fuel, but the fuel that is in it. <laughs> All right. Name my channel is Musty Ones. I'm, I'm used to handling some bad smells. That is terrible. When I dropped it down, there was a little bit in it. It splashed on my jeans. I went home and threw them out. <laughs> They're out on the porch for a while. I let them out in the rain. The stink would just not go off of them. So that's how bad it is. It does not look terrible inside. It really is not. See if I can. There you go. It's not that bad, but it's just so rotted and thin on the side. It has a couple of wet spots kind of appearing right there. So I just kind of decided to bail on it altogether. The gas tank on a Mustang, the one that's over there, Cougar Mustang Falcon is physically pretty much the same size same lip going around it you can install them that one is two gallons bigger that's why i went with it the biggest thing is that you have to change the inlet is here on this and again you look on the other tank it would come through the trunk and down the center so we have to cut that one off plug that hole and reattach it over here on this one and make ourselves a tank so that's the next thing another thing that's on the list to go get done let's go see what our friends left us i'm about to clean it out you can see the rest of it all packed up inside there nasty huh and there was what was left of the gas neck too it's all done so people are asking me why why are you calling this a ratty truck? It literally has rats in it. <laughs> it literally, <laughs> all right. He was hanging out over here somewhere. Where'd he go? Literally had rats, rodents, mice, a little bit, hence being called ratty. All right, so I'm gonna go clean up the mess around here, get rid of that gas tank, get that out of here. Just wanted to show what we had. Get the brake drums on there, adjust the brakes. Can't bleed them yet because of the master cylinder. Then we'll clean up the floor and then we'll finally get into it. And we're all cleaned up. Wheels are on, adjusted. Got rid of the crud nest up in there for now. So I found the first thing for us to work on. It's in the front suspension. The tie rod is hitting the leaf spring perch, and if you look in the center, it's got a big bend to it. That right there, I do not think that is supposed to be factory. You know, fucking factory is supposed to hit the leaf springs. Uh, we could, I don't know, maybe try prying on it. Let's see what we got for. Might be able to pry. You know what? Why don't we try taking a C clamp first before we go crazy? Let's just try putting the C-clamp here. We'll crank down on it and see if that'll help us. I have a feeling it's gonna try and slip off of there pretty easy. If you don't know until you try, right? I'll throw up here. Vice grips on it. See if I can rotate it so that it, it's kind of on an angle. Facing, it's facing like, like that. I like to try to get a straight pull on it if we can. That's what happens here. That's about all we're gonna get. So let's see if we can apply some 
gingerly pressure and influence it. Probably throw a little bit of heat on it too, but I'd rather not. You think it's just going to spring back? Or you think we got it? I think it's going to spring back most of the way. See what happens. Yeah. Is that any better? I would say, I would say no. <laughs> Let's go try it one more time. We'll run it all the way down this time. Watch one of the tie rod ends just pop right out of the socket. I could probably support it. Yeah, that's what, let's run it down, see what happens. If this doesn't work, yeah, plus I have to get more. But there's a tab on the lift that's right there. That's why I'm off about two inches from the center of the bend. I could tell you it is no longer hitting the leaf springs like before it was. Clears it a little. So let's line that right up. Where the lift is. Is that where the bend is right there? Let's block. We'll throw some blocks in right here so that the bend is more concentrated. I'll try it one more time. Got one plate on the other side. Oh, she didn't get one on here. What do I want to do? I want to come on an angle like this, because the closer to the center I can get, it can still be supported. That might be a little bit of. All right. Yeah, let's try it. Back it off, go more. Let's see what we got. Is that better? That's pretty good, huh? It's got a slight bow to it. I have a feeling though where I think if I take those bars out, it actually might be good. And the last thing I want to do is go the other way, you know? It's tapped it down out of there. I think we might call that a win. So either your alignment's right on now or it's really screwed up. <laughs> it was either good before and it's gonna eat tires now or vice versa. Oh no, all right. Down there, I thought he bent it too far. Yeah, that's awesome. We got about straight ahead, there's a little over a half inch clearance. You see? 
That looks pretty good. We're both the same. And when it would go to a full turn, it was hitting. So now it's man, plenty. Nice. Fixed off the list. Well, I really want to get on some metal work because I just brought home four sheets of four by eight. Start making stuff, but we're going to move forward with fixing the brakes so that at least at the end of this, we can fire it up, run it, and drive it. George Jetson's little, uh, <laughs> Wrong way. Wonder what stuff we're going to find by jumping here. This one. Looks like there's an access through the up at the floor. It's probably for filling it. Like it, yeah. Brake pressure switch. I think it goes to a three-way T. What do you think the chances are that's going to come free? Two bolts going through it. And it looks like they use it for the pivot. Looks like it's also the pivot for the emergency brake which does work. All right, I guess we go for brake lines first. Actually, do we have to take them off? I wonder if we can, no, oh, that light's getting you. I wonder if we can undo that nut and if it's got like a banjo fitting on each side of it. Yeah, maybe. They don't look broad, somebody at some point replaced them. You do a great job of it, there's no grommet there. We'll fix that stuff. They actually didn't, they didn't dress them very neat neither. Yeah, we'll do a little bit of dolling out there. What we got going on here? A couple of charging wires that are looking a little on the iffy side. And the radiator. Yeah, definitely a bad spot right there. I think it's puny. You see, that's where we're working. Let's go. Get the wires off of it. Those two wires just complete a circuit. The switch, you hit the brakes, makes hydraulic pressure, pushes a set of contacts in here, <clears throat> makes the brake lights come on. And yes, I do have a line wrench, but we have to take that switch off. So let's go see what we get first. <laughs> It moves. Good. A firm believer in leave well enough alone. If you can get away with leaving well enough alone. Yeah. Suck it long, huh? Kinda. There you go. So there should be another, I would think there'd be another washer sitting here. Yes, no, maybe. Usually there's a copper. Nah. Well, we'll leave that for now. And now we have, we could probably undo the linkage. What size is that? Could we be that lucky? I would think it would have a cotter key in it too. 
You see about getting that off? And then we got these two to get removed. Nope, no cutter keys. Let's make that fit for that side. And it's a 916 nut on the other end. It's probably a GM nut. Caught that one in the crook of the arm. Guess you don't have to worry about that turning, do we? I wonder if that's a wonder if that's threaded in. And I also think that it's this bracket, can you see? That, that might be a bit of a guillotine, huh? Let's see if I get that out of the way. Spring loaded action. And I bet you we still need to turn. We don't. <laughs> All right, pedals disconnected. Let's see about these two. I can feel nuts on the back side. Whether they're welded to the frame or not, we're gonna go find out. I'm gonna shoot a little bit of juice back there first to, to free it up. How about, throw a little bit of compressed air, throw an impact gun at it. I think that pedal is going to be still attached yet. I forgot to remove something. I bet you have to unbolt that whole pedal. Yes. Might have been a good idea to notice that earlier, huh? How is that on there? Why does this seem like it's a big rivet? <laughs> It's got like a rivet head on both sides. Well, that, that might be an issue. Eh, let's go wiggle it down a little bit, take a better peek. Bolt, anybody missing a bolt? So how would, this gotta come apart here somewhere. Somewhere in that mess. But you've got a. Uh, wonder if it's got a clip on it. I'm gonna need a minute to clean that up. Find out what's going on. I think it does. Like, yeah, yeah, there it is. I gotta wash it down now so we can see what we're doing and get ourselves a, I think it's a set of snap ring pliers. I think that's what's in there. Can't tell yet. See something. I see a break in it though. comes off this side. Man, that's gonna be a bitch. Come on. You know I don't want to stab myself in the finger neither. I think I, so I think it started though. There we go. Could have made that a little easier. Alright. We're in bushing with the transfer over. Let's go clean that up. What a bench you we got. And looks the same, huh? 
just got a plastic reservoir cap instead of whatever is on that one. So we need the rod. Don't say that too loud. Yeah. <laughs> Good thing we're replacing that. We'll clean that up on the wire wheel. And then we gotta get the bushings out of there. Let's put it in the vise. See if we can take a punch and knock them out. This works. <laughs> it's just sitting in there. Is one even in the other side? No, actually I think it's still stuck up underneath, isn't it? You hit that with a grease gun anyway, but let's go through. Keep that from rusting up again too. Gooey mess. You guys need to be in a stand, don't you? You're way too wiggly to be freehanding. The odds that brake switch is going to be any good. Brake lights. Those two wires back on. And we owe it some brake fluid. We got to tighten that up yet, right? Yeah. For a secret conversation, yes, you're supposed to bleed from the furthest to the closest way. I opened the floor up, filled the master up. We got you. <laughs> Pressurize it from down below. I don't know if the bleeders are tight or loose going around. I need to check them. But I have a wrench 
on right behind us on that closest one. I'm gonna work that from the other side. Crack a loose so you can get some uh, air out of it. that line that more than likely I left loose that ah, feels tight not tight enough apparently so I have a loose line I don't know if you guys can see there you go took care of that so now I'm getting my little helper here help me weed the brakes clamp that on and do the rest back nice slip off they come to see there we go do that a few more times and travels about two inches we got full brakes once we drive it around a little bit and the brakes set seat, we can go back and adjust them one more time and it'll probably even be a little bit better than that, but that's pretty decent. I'm surprised this thing doesn't have an adjustment on it somewhere. Usually there's a an area to adjust the free play of the master cylinder and there isn't. Hey guys, it's getting pretty late. I have brakes finally, so we could actually take this thing, put the tires on it, actually run it through the gears and see how everything else is. I have not gotten it done that yet. And it is registered. So, before we do that, I probably want to go ahead and get the rear shocks on it first because the tires are oversized and they will rub into the wheel wells and cut the tires. We still have work to do as far as that's concerned. So, maybe we'll hop on that tomorrow morning and hopefully be able to take it for a spin. All right, guys, it's the next day, kind of late in the day, but let's get to getting and get a rear. Set of rear coilovers on that. How will you think that hardware is gonna come out? So I think our best bet is maybe to let the lift down. We'll put a set of jack stands on the rear pump in there, the rear axle. That'll give us some room to get in there with a, probably an impact gun. This ought to be rusty. I think that was just gonna fall right out of there, did you? Let's see. Ooh, man, that's a good sign. Yeah, it looks like it's gonna get the bushing behind, which is probably not all that bad of an issue because I'm sure the bushing on the shocks I have is metric, and the hole size is gonna be different. Let's go over to the bench, see what we can uh, come up with. All right, see what we got. This would be the upper. So close way yet so far. Might even be able to drill that one out. Problem is it's gonna want to spin. And for the bottom. Yeah, it might be the same deal on the bottom. Might be able to drill them out, I don't know. Again, what's going to happen is they're going to want to spin in the hole. 
If that happens, we'll just punch them right out and use the bushing from the other one. Yeah, it's probably going in dry. It's probably going to lock up on me. Let's see if that's going to do it for the bolt, too, if we get it. I think so. Good. One down. So I decided to spare you the noise. I thought that was a sleeve. And it's not. <laughs> I tried slicing it in, in half and like peeling it so it get the, the cut off of there. It's just not having it. So it is part of it. I'm gonna go back, I'll say spare you some more noise. I'll go clean it up with the disc. And we'll punch the uh, bushing out of the shock. I already had it out, put it back in, and uh, we'll go with it that way, I guess. Eh, no harm, no foul. It's in there. Cleaned it up. One thing I should have done, I'll show you on this one. There is a collar on the bottom. See those steps? You can change the tension by ratcheting that up. And then right now it's on the weakest setting. But of course, it's on a nice, easy spot to get to. They come with a little tool. Give her some clicks. I'm going to go set that to high. Get up. Which way do I need to go? I need to go that way? I think so. Motorcycles are the same way. You know I'm going to slip off and punch the brake light. <laughs> I got one more. Or are we on the high one already? Got a couple to go. That one might have slipped backwards actually. Would have been so much easier to do it do it first. Yeah, I keep slipping off. I think it's a good time to get a pair of gloves and move you guys out of the way. There's another one. Or hurt myself. And the second one only took 10 minutes. Go figure. Learn your lumps on the first one, right? All right, let's get the wheels back on it, get it back on the ground, jump on the bumper, and uh, see how close we come to the wheel well. Get ready to drop it back in on the ground, but I want to take a second just to show while the gas tank's out. That's that weight they're talking about, this thing right here. It's a 165 pound weight, and uh, they ended up adding it later because in the right conditions, if you romped on the brakes with nothing in the back of the truck, you can get the back of the tires off the ground about two or three feet in the air. <laughs> At some point, yes, I would definitely like to try that. So it's probably gonna come out of there. I got a bunch of uh, rust work, as you can see. All needs to be done. So I'm not gonna bother putting the gas tank in. We'll probably run it off a boat tank and put it around. But I wanna get all that welding work done, so there's no sense putting that tank in yet. Just wanted to show that weight though where it was hidden above the tank. Down we go. I would think it's probably gonna stay right about where it is because it's already sitting on the axle. And that's not the only thing we're gonna modify. I'm gonna take the bump stops, probably lower them so that it only has so much room and probably modify the wheel wells a little. Yeah. So you got the air in that tire too. Let's go jump on the bumper. Too. You know what time it is? All right, we are. We have enough gas for a good two miles. Let's see how everything decides to work. I may want to get my jacket out of the fan. Cold start. We need choke. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> Just when you thought it was. Sounds good. I didn't have to choke all the way up. That breaks. Out of gas. <laughs> it is out of gas. Oh, good timing. A drop to be had. <laughs> See the manifolds heating up. Filled the tank back up. If I had more room, I would have just put used this gas can, put the hose right down it. Just need to get a longer piece of fuel line. Let's go give her a little bit of that. It may take a few. Hopefully it's not in gear. Of course the key is nine miles over there. Jump at the fan. Pumping, I see it pumping. Pumping gas. Uh, maybe not enough. <laughs> Let's do it one more time. There we go. Back in action. Let's go get some outside shots, shall we? Oh, 
like a kitten. A sewing machine kitten, that is. Nice. Just say those tires are for summer. <laughs> and throw some air in that front one too. That works good. I thought the clutch might have been slipping a little bit, but the back tires just have so much surface area and no weight on them that it was just kind of spinning freewheel. But uh, until I get it out in the road and really kind of run it, uh, we'll have a better idea. Seems like everything's functioning good. The radiator's not pissing a bunch of fluid out, just very lightly. And again, we'll take care of that soon. Nice little break. Be a lot quieter too once that engine compartment is all closed up inside there. It's just a wheel spinning fiend. Nice, yeah, fire back. Oh. Can't beat that. I'm happy with that. Seems like everything is functioning decently. The trans doesn't uh, grind going into gears except for when I try to put it in reverse. <laughs> and uh, steering wheel seem to be fairly straight going down the street. Not sure how it's going to look for the back tires bouncing. Uh, look back at the video, I'll probably be able to see. I don't see any cuff marks in them, so I don't think we hit. Uh, I think next we're going to get into doing the metal work. At least enough of the metal work in the rear so that the gas tank can go back in, and then it's you know, it'll be functional for the road other than chasing some lights and whatnot. It's already registered, it's, you know, all that stuff's already done. I just don't put the plates on it yet. This seems fairly decent. I don't think it's a great winter truck with those tires on it though. I'm definitely happy with it. Hey right, guys. 
The front tire is low too. Should put some air in that. The uh, lock for the front seat isn't locked, so that the seat was sli <laughs> sliding on me. And click the springs off of it. But the engine seems fine. Smell a little bit of antifreeze. Yeah, you can see where it's kind of like whispering out of it. It probably went down to a certain level, but it leaks right in the where the tank is right here. And again, down below, I had another spot. But we have a new one for that to cure that problem. And I haven't even tuned it up yet. I haven't even opened the distributor cap or anything. As far as uh, you know, setting the points and checking all that stuff out of it. It's still got to change oil in it too. Uh, wanted to run it, get it hot. I might even do that in a, in a couple of minutes. But I'm happy with it. All right, guys. I'm gonna start rambling, but I do enjoy, <laughs> you know, the fruits of the labor of working on stuff. Yeah. All right. Till the next one. I'll see you.